Hello friends, my name is Mariness. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. <laughs> this is the start of a weekend reading vlog. It is the first weekend that I have been home in a number of weeks and it's also the beginning of the month. So I am just really much feeling like taking this weekend to get my life in order um, and also read a bunch. There's also like a tropical storm that is passing through. We are predicted to get a lot of rain throughout the weekend so it is like the perfect weekend to just stay home, see nobody, read my books. I figured I'd get started just telling you a couple of things that are on my radar. <laughs> I hesitate to say TBR because I suck at them um, but I have been doing these books on my radar videos over on TikTok. So basically I went through all of the ones that I've already made and made a list of the books that I said were on my radar that I haven't read yet. It's a lot. First up, Magic Binds and Magic Triumphs, books 9 and 10 in the Kate Daniel series. I've been reading the series for years now and mostly I've just been rereading the first five. <laughs> uh, six is my least favorite so I always stall out when I get there but I made it like a thing that this year I was going to finish this series. I have now reread books one through six. I finally read books seven and eight. Seven was fantastic and I think eight might be my favorite of the series which is a little wild because eight is just kind of a throwback to very early Kate Daniel series and now I have just these two to finish it off. Earlier this year I read The Past is Read by Catherine and Valenti which just reminded me how much I love Valenti's books and there are a couple of her more recent releases that I hadn't read yet so I'd like to read Comfort Me with Apples and Osmo Unknown and the Eight Penny Woods. Next is Cats and Jammer by Francesca Zappia. I got this arc on TikTok because I came across a video from Zappia in which she was trying to explain the very weird premise of this book and it sounded just fantastic and right up my alley so I left a comment that was just like grabby hands and Francesca like reached out to me via DM and she was like are you are you serious I will send you this book uh which astounding truly fantastic amazing amazing I loved Francesca and her monsters so much we did a whole podcast episode about it a few years ago so I was super excited she sent this along right away it was a couple of months ago so I am super slacking we've got some book club books so first of all I am in House Salt and we do a monthly live show for a book that we pick and read together and this month's book is Book of Night by Holly Black have I had good luck with Holly Black books? Absolutely not. I tend to be in like the two to three star range with her books except for the ones that I DNF'd like The Cruel Prince and so like I'm not super optimistic about this one but I'm always intrigued by her premises. And also I started my own book club and it is in partnership with Chirp Books. So Chirp Books is an audiobook retailer with no subscriptions. Every month I pick a science fiction or fantasy book that we read together and Chirp Books deeply discounts the audiobook for my readers. You can follow the book club over on chirpbooks.com slash marines and so every month you'll receive the email with my pick for that month and then at the end of the month you'll receive a survey to like give your feedback, submit your feedback about what you thought for the book and I use all of that information plus the conversations that I'm having on my TikTok updates and maybe updates here as we kind of move forward and I compile all of that to do a review at the end of the month and then that review and the summary of all of these survey answers goes out to everybody who followed the book club as well. It's really really neat I think. <laughs> I'm biased but I really love the format so far. My pick for June is An Unkindness of Ghosts by River Solomon and I hope you guys will join me. Please go to chirpbooks.com slash to follow the book clubs and you can also buy the audiobook of An Unkindness of Ghosts for $2.99. I hope you guys do participate please. <laughs> I appreciate the support. I'm, I realized how many books I still have to mention so let's run through these. Ballad and Dagger by Daniel Jose Older and Witchlings by Claribel Ortega. The Candy House by Jennifer Egan came out and I want to reread <laughs> A Visit from the Goon Squad um, in order to then move on to The Candy House. House Salt's 
good club for May was Book Lovers. I was unable to make it because of an emergency and so I didn't read this book but I still very much have it on my TBR. And Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. I have pretty much loved everything that I've read from Mandel so I'm excited about this one as well. And I think that's it. <laughs> that's uh, more than enough um, but those are all of the books that are sort of on my radar and I've got to get through this work day but then as soon as the work day is over it's reading time. I am really killing the game <laughs> and by that I mean I didn't get out of bed until like noon. Uh, I woke up super late and I didn't even really realize because it was so flipping dark outside because of the tropical storm and all of the rain. Right now is like the first time we have gotten sun and it is 4.48. So it's just been dark and rainy and gloomy all day long. And you're probably thinking, wow, Maddie, what perfect weather for reading. Um... <laughs> Last night I started Osmo Unknown and I got a couple of chapters into that and then this morning when I actually got up and like made coffee and my breakfast and got ready for the day and all of that I was listening to Ballad and Dagger which I also have on audiobook and I got up to page 150 in Ballad and Dagger. That's definitely going to be the one that I finished today she says so confidently. Now as I'm reading I'm gonna start like picking up in my office. None of my stuff like gets like super messy because I am a neat freak a little bit but since I've been out of my apartment for the last couple of weeks and things have been hectic it has gotten pretty messy and so like this is <laughs> this is the stuff that starts to happen um when I need to really pick up and clean my apartment a lot of those are TBR books not all but a lot and then there's my TBR shelf which is continuing to just kind of get I mean, it's not grown exponentially, but it's not gone down. Uh, so I have a feeling that I need to like go through this now again and really call it and decide what I'm going to read. If all of that is sitting there from when I did my project, my unhauling project, and I have not read a ton of them, like things aren't cycling off, like maybe that means I'm not going to read these and I just need to accept it. The other thing is that like my bookshelves are relatively full. I can take off these like baskets and that opens up more space on each of those. But the thing about I like about bookshelves personally and bookcases is having room for like knickknacks and things, which I'm kind of running out of room to like stick things in between and to organize in a way that doesn't just feel like a line of books. So I've been thinking about adding shelves on either side. I know you're probably thinking, Maddie, you just did a whole unhaul thing to get down to the number of shelves that I have. And that is true. Uh, I think I said in those videos though, that if I ever needed to grow again, like I would, it's not really about like pulling down, like a sp having a specific number of books, but of having a collection that I enjoy. Like I need to figure out a little bit this balance, but the fact of the matter is that these books that I've read and enjoyed, I'm like running out of space to display them in a way that I want to display them. I have decided that like the first step of this is going to be to go through my shelves as they exist of read books and make sure all of those books are books that I want. I just finished reading Ballad and Dagger. This is a YA fantasy that is about a small community in Brooklyn whose population all come from the island of San Madrigal which is now completely underwater. So the community that was displaced from San Madrigal moves to Brooklyn and there we meet our main characters and unfortunately the evil that caused the island to originally sink is back and our main character is thrown right into the middle of like the political and magical battle that ensues. The strongest parts of this to me were the narrative voice. I really loved the narration and narrative voice of Mateo. I found the narrative voice really charming and warm and I laughed out loud at times as I was reading because of like the description and the way that our main character viewed the world. I also found it really authentic authentic and like believable and grounded in a story that is otherwise sort of like magical and fantastical. I love to come across YA where the voice of the main character feels 
like a teen. Like the book is written with that audience in mind and very mindfully of who the characters are and that is definitely the case here. I also really loved elements of the world building, specifically how music is used and incorporated throughout and also just everything that this had to say about like a diaspora community and how that informs identity within the community, specifically with people who are first generation and also the legacy of colonial colonialism and how that affects like the stories that we tell ourselves and the histories of where we're from. So all of that was just smart and well incorporated and really thoughtful. I will say that like the beginning of this starts pretty slow and it feels purposeful in the way that it builds up but I would be mindful especially for people who need a fast start to their books that this does take a while to get going and there were moments throughout where something huge would happen and then it would seemingly just kind of like not go back to normal but they would just like all go back to school or to the shop or things that like really brought down like the pace of the action suddenly. The last portion of it is action-packed and moves pretty well. I will say that it also has like a surprising amount of world building considering that we are like in a contemporary sort of location and I found myself losing track a little bit sometimes of people and places. Overall though a pretty good reading experience and I would give this I'm somewhere between 3.5 and 4 out of five stars. This morning I got up and got ready and went to church and my parents house and had dinner there. Uh, so a pretty full and busy day, not a ton of reading so far. Between last night and this morning I picked up a book that came through on a library hold and wasn't <laughs> in my original DVR stack so that's before the coffee gets cold and I've listened to about 60% of this so far. That said I did do a little like mini unhaul of at least that one shelf there that I needed space on to put like the new in death series books that I bought. I decided to unhaul The Astonishing Color of After by Emily XR Pan. This was like a three or a 3.5 out of five stars read for me. I thought that there were things in this that were really well done and moments where the language and the description was beautiful but the plot itself and a lot of the description itself was also highly repetitive and it's just so freaking long in a way that really made this drag for me and like those moments of beauty and those moments of like really feelsy writing couldn't save the moments that felt so utterly dull. This is one that I can pass along and hopefully somebody else will enjoy it more than I did because there is something here to be enjoyed. These Broken Stars by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. I remember being pleasantly surprised by the story especially at a time where I was kind of like reading so much YA and YA fantasy and YA sci-fi and all of that and this being like a step above like what I was reading. And I remember this pretty vividly. I also remember like where I was when I was reading it. So I've got a good memory of the story. And so this was one that I was like, okay, I see why I kept this in the first place because it is more positive experience in my head. But also I never finished the series. I have no interest in finishing the series. I'll never reread this, I feel like. And even if I did want to like one day go back and reread this or finish a series, I could do it through the library. I don't really Really need this copy. Next I have Lock In by John Scalzi. This was actually on my TBR. I pulled it <laughs> with this because I was making room on my TBR as well. I've tried to start this three or four times and I was never able to like do it. I really enjoy John Scalzi and I've enjoyed other of his works but this just a thing that is just like a tiny thing that drives me absolutely wild and it is the overuse of the said dialogue tag. So it's like this person said, this person said, this person said, this person said over and over and over again and it's like a repetition as somebody a reader who's like sensitive to repetition it just absolutely drives me bonkers and I cannot get into the story so I'm just going I mean I gave it its fair shot literally have started this two or three times and I think I'm just gonna say this one isn't for me and pass that along I'm doing it <laughs> I'm doing it I've read this three times I think I've read this freaking book three times and every time I read it I hate it more than the last time it's not a good book I'm sorry this is so generic it is so generic and the middle of this book is arguably like as dull as watching paint dry. We just watch her fail over and over and over again and none of the characters are really standouts to me and in fact I have developed a deep deep hatred for the Darkling. <laughs> 
<laughs> and how people are like, he's so, he's so charming. He's so whatever it is, however they describe him, at, even as a villain, he's so bland. He barely says anything in this freaking thing. He's just a tall white guy who wears black. And that's when people are like, oh, so charming, jumps off the page. I don't think so. I tried to also read the second book and continue on in the series. And I quit the second book every time so hard after that first chapter where it's like, we're running away, we're caught again. Like, I can't, I can't. <laughs> uh, time to call it quits. Oh, I'm throwing in the towel again. I give nothing but fair chances. I've tried so many times to read and to like this and I just cannot. This isn't good. Next we have The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. We read this for the House Salt book club in May, I believed, and I, I really didn't like this. I went back and forth about like keeping it because I've heard that the series does get better and there was at least a little bit of a sliver of something here that I could maybe convince myself to continue to read in the series, especially because because people do say that it gets so much better as Samantha Shannon like matures as a writer. But uh, then I thought about it and I was like, okay, what were those things that like were good enough to like kind of hook you? And they're all gone from my brain. I like immediately yeeted the experience of reading this from my brain. I couldn't even tell you the name of the character. Honestly, I've got nothing. And I think that's a pretty good indication. Like I've got so many unread books and I've got so many other like things that I'm truly and actively interested in. And this isn't even one that I could be like, it's for content because I don't know that anybody cares. <laughs> um, so I think I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna unhaul it. My camera died <laughs> yesterday during that last update. I think I got through my unhaul. So after it died, I was just like, whatever. <laughs> I'll put it to charge and I'll check in tomorrow. Uh, last night I did finish Before the Coffee Gets Cold and 3.5 out of 5 stars is pretty much where I've landed. I really loved the premise and I loved a lot of the characters that we met and just how sad it ultimately is but in a really hopeful and comforting way and the overall message of how you can't change the past but you can change your heart and like your mind about things and that can affect your future. All of that was really warm and lovely. I did like the first two stories better than I liked the back half of the book. Something about both of the like last two stories and what actually happened between the characters was not only sad, it was a little bit uncomfortable because of the kind of grief that they were experiencing and the choices that both of those characters made. The writing style I think is like a big hurdle to kind of get over just because I think it does have that almost stilted screenplay style still within it and for such a short book it is even though it's like time travel a pretty simple premise that it keeps going over and over and over and it really takes a long time to get to the point where any of the characters are actually traveling back and so it feels a little drawn out even though it's really short. After I finished with that I continued on with Osmo Unknown and the Eight Penny Woods. I'm currently 81 pages into this. I'm going to try to get to some little free libraries around my neighborhood today. I have a few things that I have to ship out to employees and like it's stuff that I keep here, t-shirts, notebooks, and things like that. So I have to go mail all of these packages out and I figured while I was out I would track down some of these little free libraries. I've never seen one or been to one like the entire time I've lived in Fort Lauderdale, which is an oversight. I'm not going to promise that I'm not bringing anything back, but I'm going to try and leave more than I take. <laughs> That's the goal. Well, I found my first little free library. It's pretty full, so I don't know how much I'm going to be able to leave in here, uh, but a, a few. Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Some James Patterson. More James Patterson. I left the bone season. That felt the most fitting. <laughs> All of that construction nearly threw me off, like, or whatever they're doing over there, but I found my second little free library. Let's see what's going on here. Aha. Some kids books, lots of kids books, very poorly organized. <laughs> 
I cleaned it up a little bit there and I left a bunch of the YA that I had. I hope whoever has children around here enjoys. I'm back here. I didn't say anything at the last little free library that I found because it was like five o'clock about that time and there were kids playing in the street. The only way I could get to it was to kind of like interrupt them. And so I was like, I'm sorry, I'll move like right away. And they're like, no problem. But also I didn't want to be like taking footage and like narrating as these kids were like waiting for me to go away. So I dropped the last of my books there. This weekend was eh, unproductivity. Today was a super productive day, but I'm egg exhausted. I am like totally knackered out after not sleeping great last night. So even though the sun has not set and I'm like freshly off of finishing work and eating dinner, me and Osmo are going to go to bed. <laughs> I'm going to read for as long as my little eyes will stay open. I don't know where the last two days went. Work, busy, black hole of time. But I like woke up today and was like, oh, I never finished my reading vlog, which is fine because it makes it a week long reading vlog and I just need to accept that that's the right cadence for me. And I did finish reading Osmo Unknown and I'm going to give this four stars for now with the absolute understanding that this is not a book that I should have read quickly. I will say that if you read Fairyland and you enjoyed it but it was kind of like on the limit of what you like in terms of flowery writing and whimsy this will be too much for you because I think that this is even more. However if you read Fairyland and you were like yes inject it straight into my veins you will also enjoy and appreciate this. I think that this also took longer to get started. It took a while for the story to really take off and it wasn't until maybe about 40 or 50 percent of the way through that I felt everything click together especially in terms of Osmo and his companions that I was like oh my gosh okay yes <laughs> my feelings are invested they do have my heart the entire adventure can be summarized by like Osmo who is a young boy who is trying to figure out his place like in life is accompanied on this journey basically with like grumpiness and loneliness and they're like figuring out the dynamics between the three of them as they embark on this journey and it's just really sweet and special even though it does take that time to kind of get it going and get it gelled together. So I already know that I will reread this. Since I've got some hours left in the day I will also probably finish the next thing that I'm reading which is now streaming. If all goes well I will finish that today and I have a feeling it will also be like 3.5 or 4 out of 5 stars. I finished reading now streaming and my initial thoughts held. This is between a 3.5 and a 4 out of 5 stars for me. It is not one that I would recommend if you are a contemporary romance reader who likes things on the milder side. I would by no means call this like super spicy but it is definitely more than like the one or two scenes that you get in your average contemporary romance or a work that is 270 pages and that feels built to like read in one or two sittings. I think that this did pretty well in getting the balance right between like plot and romance and spiciness and it gave us just enough of the characters to feel like they were full characters and that it made it easy to root for them and to understand their circumstances. It was a pretty clean manuscript. I only caught like one or two typos and there were only like a handful of things that I personally would have changed. Especially at the beginning I felt like the first couple of chapters weren't as clean and tight as the rest of it was but largely like better edited and written than a lot of what I have read on KU. So if you're in the market for a contemporary romance on KU that will be solid, easy to read, one or two sittings, entertaining from beginning to end, I feel like this is a good one. And that's it. That brings us to the end of this week's reading vlog. I finished Ballad and Dagger, Before the Coffee Gets Cold, Osmo Unknown and the Eight Penny Woods, and now streaming. If you have read or would like to read any of the books I've mentioned, let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon. I'm good. I keep jailing me and Charlie. Uh -huh. <laughs>